have an interesting opportunity here. We actually have two versions of the LC500 and neither one of them are the normal version. No, as a matter of fact, there's three versions of this. We've got the LC500H, which we're in, and we also have the brand new LC500 convertible. This is an interesting beast. I wanna start with styling because I believe the Lexus mantra and the Lexus styling is best manifested on these cars. But also Lexus is doing the floating roof on this car mm -hmm. and they have specifically noted that where it goes to the back in the C-pillar, the trim pieces look like Japanese swords. Did they acknowledge the Predator Maw? By the way, they we did not. called it the Predator Maw the first time we saw it. We may have been the first people that was ever called it that. I think. Yes, it's been a long time. This may be the only car it actually works on. It still looks like I the agree. Predator. It still That's has that, you know, looks like the Predator thing. But yeah. on the LC500 in any flavor, I think that is the only place this ridiculous Lexus grill actually works. <laughs> I do think it looks yeah. genuinely eye-catching and beautiful on this car, which is impressive because I don't like it on anything else. The price for the 500H is one hundred and four thousand dollars. One hundred four five forty, actually. So. It's not an inexpensive car. And, <laughs> That's an understatement. But for what it does, and for the market that it's positioned towards, I think they've done a good job. And again, with the styling, I think it's gonna last. I honestly do. I'm in the hybrid. I have to go here real quick for power. This is the three and a half liter V6 that is in a lot of Toyota's lineup. It, it just it upshifted is. for me, by the way, even though I am oh, in manual mode. Oh, good. And I'm in extra sporty goodness mode making sure yes oh did you hear that oh yeah mm -hmm. piping the sound in that's all right okay no i'll go to sound sound real quick this car doesn't sound good it doesn't sound right it sounds like a weird combination of okay if you stand outside it it's a hybrid yeah. it sounds like your space pod is waiting sir when you stand outside of it when <laughs> you're it. inside of it it's a weird combo of like a vacuum cleaner and a high-end coffee grinder it's not good car sound we have driven quite a bit of Toyota product, and there have been a few cars, I can think the RAV4 and the Highlander specifically, where I like them best in hybrid form. I look forward to the hybrid versions. However, this is not one of those. I think this car in the hybrid version is all wrong. I don't like the okay. sound. Okay. It is not powerful enough. If it was much more powerful than I expected, I would forgive the sound but it's not. I keep waiting it for yeah. it to be more powerful and then it sounds bad and I spend $105,000 on it. Yeah. I'm sorry, but this is an unacceptable combination. This is, as far as I'm concerned, a void at all cost in hybrid form. Really? I do not like this car in hybrid at all. Interesting. I think even for the market, if this got 45 miles to the gallon in hybrid, like really did well. Okay, okay. Okay. It gets 30s. Yeah, it, it does doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. Not only is the power delivery a hybrid, and first of all, it is, as Todd said, the V6, the first electric motor is connected to the engine. The second electric motor is connected to the rear wheels, and it also covers regenerative braking. So therefore, this car is both a series and a parallel hybrid, okay? <laughs> How complex can we make it? It yeah. carries batteries just behind the rear seats. Now, with a transmission, the transmission is also, in and of itself, a hybrid transmission. It is a CVT connected to a four-speed automatic. <laughs> we said it in the LS. This is the worst of both worlds. I'm sorry, but it's the worst of both worlds. It's another car I don't think works in hybrid. If you're gonna make a car this special and this good looking, I do think it's good looking. Yeah, agreed. We want it to really have something. It's either kind of a muscle car underneath or it's kind of a sports car underneath. But to actually just bring a hybrid powertrain where you're just gonna cruise, I want it to be an excellent GT car. But in hybrid form, I'm not all there not powerful enough and the transmission isn't sporting enough no matter what setting you have it on yeah and then you have a bad noise on top of it i'm sorry i think those are death blows to a car like this if you're spending this kind of money a lot. you're a person who is no longer i hate to say it you're no longer that concerned about gas mileage i think so too. unless it was so too. great gas mileage and this is better just give me the big engine yeah
in the inside, you're mm -hmm. down in this car, which is nice. And mm -hmm. I do like what Lexus has done with the style. It's very strange to have some twisting surfaces that I, I don't know what to do with. It intersects <laughs> in strange ways, but then it's very clean and crisp to indicate, all right, this is going to be a long lasting, clean design intersected by strange shapes. This also is a carryover from the LFA. The LFA was this big atom bomb in the styling yeah, and yeah. even the reputation of Lexus. And they instantly, with that sliding gauge and everything, instantly went to an interior, all of their interiors, no matter what it was, sort of look kind of like the LFA. This car looking yeah. most like the LFA, it works the best here. So to put it in gear, it's just a toggle switch here. So you go over toward your knee to the left and then back into drive. If you want to put it in manual mode, you just push straight back. The lever just resets itself. So it's just a toggle switch right here. Yeah, toggles have not been all that successful with the general public right. as far as a transmission selector. And I think this one is in that kind of, is it confusing category? Once you get it, it's fine. Ooh, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, it turned up a noise that's bad. It's yeah. even more. And it shifts for itself. It Even in manual mode, it shifts it for itself. Well, right at red line. So this transmission combination, I was trying to figure out at first because we like to drive a car like mm -hmm. it's designed to do. And I was curious because the tack wouldn't move and you hear the engine fluctuate in RPM, mm -hmm. but the tack doesn't move. And then above fourth gear, then I felt a shift. So what the CVT is doing is acting with this transmission to give you the smoothest experience possible. That's what it's designed for. And then, mm -hmm. But see right there, I didn't move my foot and, and the it, tack didn't move, mm -hmm. but the engine changed RPM. It, it wallowed and decided to strange And that's to me. the CVT getting, coming into play. And that's the thing, though. If you're going to have settings, though, of different that's modes, strange. it would suggest that it's going to have different personalities. But uh -huh. it never gets away from that weird kind of rubber band CVT mm -hmm. feeling. It never gets away from it. Also, in sound, it doesn't get away from it. I want it to be a powerhouse. And then yeah. you make it a hybrid, which I think is a mixed message in this car. I really do. I'm thinking the engineering effort that's put into this to then add Sport Plus is a weird combination. Mm -hmm. Either make it a hybrid without Sport Plus and I'm just cruising. Mm -hmm. And the car is just mm -hmm. a beautiful object moving down the road. But then you want to take it out here where we are. We're on one of yeah. our favorite roads yeah. ever. And you start to feel the steering. And I think, all right, am I only feeling the tall, wide tires? Is that all I'm feeling? That's the only thing helping the input? Because yeah. Lexus wants to insulate you from the road, from the driving experience. I want more raw feeling to the car. I want I more engagement I to the car. But then I don't know that they would sell. Well, it's not necessarily the Lexus market, but there's an opportunity with this car. I mean, let's go back to the LFA, which you and I have not driven. No. But it is universally loved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's universally loved as a driver's car with some raw feel about it. Yes, yes. Lexus can do it. They have done it. They did it with their Halo car. All of that suggests yeah. it's a free-for-all. They could do it in this car. Why isn't that switch more of a profound change? Especially in the hybrid. Eco, Not just the noise. Eco to Sport Plus yeah. should be Prius to muscle car. It should. And it, it should. isn't. It's designing for your customer. And never before have I felt a car that is so pushed and pulled back and forth between mm. knowing who will buy it mm. and pulling back from what enthusiasts want. Because this looks like an enthusiast car. It yep. looks gorgeous. Yep. You want to get in and drive it and thrash on it and think, oh, it's the next coming of the LFA. <laughs> yeah, I wish. But not at a hybrid level. No. Not here. This particular one is available with something called the Performance Package. It has almost everything, touring and sport package, but it's missing the one sport performance package that I think could actually mm. justify the Sport Plus. Okay. And that is the active rear steering. And I'm wondering if that would rotate this car even better despite its weight. It would rotate it, but that, that is the thing. All of these are nearly 4,500 pounds. That's which is a lot. really heavy. That's and a lot. its issue in corners is not grip. You mentioned the tires. The tires are fantastic. They the are. Michelin Sport tires, they're, yeah. they're great tires. They hang on hard. And that's what makes this car handle, but it has a ton of weight and a lot of body roll. Mm -hmm. And you can't get away from that Even right in now. Sport Plus. Nope, absolutely not. See, if I'm down a few gears, the engine just comes up and picks an RPM because of the CVT. <laughs> but then I think it shifts one gear down on the four-speed automatic transmission just to start to match the speed of the car. It's a strange feeling. And here's the thing. It's trying to mimic the fact that the non-hybrid version, the V8 version, has a straight-up 10-speed automatic. 10-speed. So this CVT four-speed combination is faking 10 gears. Yeah, and which, then it goes up to 10. Let's be honest. Yeah. That was arbitrary. 
you didn't right. have to fake 10 gears. You could have done six. Why? It doesn't even need to have 10. Yes. But it's trying to be 10 like the other one. I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ranting on it because I think the Achilles heel of this version is the fact that it's the hybrid. It's the one I would mm -hmm. not get. Mm -hmm. $105,000 for this. I, I, the hybrid's the, the killer for me. I come back to knowing your audience, knowing who's going to buy this car, and pricing it at a level where it's an aspirational object. Sure. But it still doesn't reach what I want it to be. It doesn't reach what you want it to be. Yeah. I don't feel like. Well, but but the person spending a hundred and five thousand dollars at least, because this starts at like ninety-seven. It's not it like starts it at starts 90, at yeah. sixty, and yeah. we no, it, it starts at a hundred grand. Okay, the person spending that much on a car like this, are they concerned if it gets twenty miles to the gallon or thirty-five? Is that really even on their list no, of things to worry about? I, I don't care. think so. I would. So that makes this a car without a home. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think the hybrid version, I think it's an avoid. I really, and I haven't said that in a while, but I think it's a car to avoid. It's strange because you and I usually like the hybrid versions of things. I, we almost we, look forward we to We have them. in a lot of other Toyota product, it is the wrong application here. And it was also wrong in the, in the LS. Okay, so we need to drive the convertible. We need to drive the true V8. Yes, that's the key thing is not only is the convertible brand new, but it goes back to the other drive line that is offered here, which is the big five liter naturally aspirated V8. Think about how few of those there are yes. and a straight up 10 speed auto. Okay. The LC 500 convertible we got in it. The interior does not reveal any convertible controls. We had four of us digging around, trying to find them. They are nowhere obvious. We looked at the, we looked up here in the headliner. We looked here where it should be. It was nowhere. And then finally, Lexus has had a questionable amount of interaction with their screen and the mouse for generations. Yes. Someone happened to pull on the back of the mouse pad and it's under there. Now once you know, great. But And some designers are probably very excited about the fact that they did that, but it's never had anything under it. The one on the hybrid does not move, it's bolted down. It's actually a flap mm -hmm. for the convertible power top on this car. It's kind of cool once you know, but it's kind of difficult to find out when, if you don't. This car does have the 5 liter V8, the LC471 wouldn't sound quite as good, so they just went, you know, 5 liters, the 500, that does sound good. Yeah. You know, I'm not one for being a convertible person, I don't think you are either too much. Not overly. But this is cool. Climbing off of what we just talked about, this car makes sense in convertible with the 5 liter. Now, this won't yes. ever be a hybrid, and I want you to talk about that, Yes. but in 5 liter, you can now interact with the noise. And <laughs> you the, can interact with your own noise. You can. And yeah. it has a real 10 speed automatic that actually listens. It's not doing weird gear hunting thing because it's a 10 speed automatic Indeed. with this noise. You're not even in sport mode. You're right. Get that sport mode. There we go. Think about how few people still make a naturally aspirated 5 liter, yeah. and Lexus is one of them. <laughs> that doesn't initially seem like it makes sense, but yet this is, honestly, it's a fantastic engine, yeah. and I'm glad they still make it. Transitioning to the styling, I think this is the best iteration and the best execution, even better than all of the other LCs. Really? For the reason, the top is busy. There's a lot of lines. There's a lot of mm -hmm. stuff going on on that floating roof, like I talked about. Yeah. On the convertible, that all disappears and all you have are the body sides. You just have mm. the clean themes and it actually resolves better at the trunk lid when you go all the way to the back. The top is less fussy. There's less mm. going on and I think it looks cleaner and therefore I think it'll look better longer in convertible Interesting. form. Okay. I think it will become kind of a classic 20, 30, 40 years from now. Really? It That's a big statement. Kind of a classic look for, oh wow. yeah, I remember the 2020s. That's what cars looked like. Hmm. But this will be that classic shape because of wow. the clean That's top. Interesting. And it, it makes a an arc that is a little bit nicer. I like this car. I like it both top up and top down. I also like that noise. True. That's pretty good. That's the right noise. This car will never be driven like you and I are driving it, though, ever, Probably by not. any owner. Now, if you were to play the guessing game, of the two cars, which one weighs 
more. Ooh, you've got the hybrid with the batteries. Yep. And this with the convertible. Now, hang on, before you reveal, yep. I do have to say this. The standard version is still about a 4,300 pound car. The non-convertible, non-hybrid yes. is still about 4,300 pounds. So there is no lightweight version of the LC500 available. Doesn't exist. It should operate like a sports car. Now, granted, it's operating against big bruisers like the 8 Series yeah. and the SL. And you know, like I said before, it's the cheaper Aston Martin. Yeah, Those sure. are not small, agile cars, which is what we like. Yeah. This drives like it weighs. It drives like a big car. Yeah. Oh, that was the thing. You were going to reveal which one is the heaviest. It's the convertible. The convertible weighs the most. 4540 is the weight on this car. The hybrid is 105 pounds less than this car. Now, and that's because of the convertible mechanism, but think of that, 105 pounds heavier than the hybrid with the batteries. They're all too heavy. But the thing they is, are. you have to learn to, to make this car go fast. You have to rely on the tires, which are great, and then you have to yeah. drive it with a ton of anticipation. Managing the tire patch is really all you're doing in that car. You and have to deal with the weight. Car. It is very heavy. Yeah. It never gets smaller. This is a genuinely heavy big car behind the wheel. It's not that you can't drive it fast but you have to dedicate yourself to driving it fast and you have to be way ahead of it. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot make words. last minute corrections. You have to go, okay, this corner's coming up, looking way into the corner. Yeah. What do I need to do before I even need to do it? You have to be already setting up. If you like the LC500, it's the convertible that is the best iteration of all of them. It feels special, doesn't it? It does, yeah. it looks the best, it will continue looking the best, and plus, all you get is the V8. That's all you do. That's all you get. Yeah. And it's great. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah it see? does. I actually a like... A bit of speed there. I was. I, it was a good number. I actually like the coupe a lot, and I'm, I may like it more than the convertible, but this is a fantastic execution it is. of taking a really crazy coupe design and going, can we make a convertible out I'm of telling that? You. They've done it very well. The convertible's where it's at, honestly. I believe that. See actual downshifts? Yeah, and it, it actually pays attention to what yes, you want. Yes, it does. It does it. This, honestly, if you're going to buy an LC500, I already said it, but I'm saying it again now that we're in the standard V8. It's the V8. Don't even the, yeah. the hybrid. I'm sorry, but it shouldn't exist. If there were personality lurking in that hybrid, I'd love it. <laughs> or if there were gas mileage, but either, there's personality yes. just by virtue of the engine alone in this car and the coupe as well. The engine, thankfully, adds personality here. This is still less than I would like for the styling. It's, sure, but then I start to see Lexus and their market segment and who they sell to. Yeah, my parents think these are the greatest cars ever. <laughs> Straight back for manual. Make sure we're in Sport S. That's good. This transmission will actually listen to you. Which it is will. A cool idea. I'm yeah. excited about that. Listen to that. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. There it, we go. It needs, it needs that personality desperately. You know what? It, it really needs does. This kind of power. Yeah, it does. You know how you and I've been talking about 400 horsepower is right about the sweet spot for yeah. a lot of cars. Not if they're heavy like this. You need 500 at least. I mean, this yeah. is getting there, but this feels just to extract something out of the car to make it feel just, at, at it this, needs to feel like it looks. At this weight, yeah. this car does zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds, which is not slow, but I think this engine at 470 horsepower and almost 400 pound feet of torque, that is just enough for this car. You could have a more powerful version that would then impress you. This feels like just enough. Yeah, see? It feels like it tracks better, even though the top is cut off, and I do feel cowl shake, but who cares? Every convertible's like that. The, Again, this car is never gonna be driven like we're driving it today. It's just gonna be cruised in. The handling is so about weight shift and it relying is. and praying to those tires. It praying is. that they hang on. I yeah. feel the shoulder of the tire when I turn in. I don't yeah. know that I feel really anything else. There's some good numbers. I There's like some it. good numbers. <laughs> And the brakes, brakes the brakes are excellent. They do. They're excellent. They have to be for this yes, kind of they weight. Yes, because this amount of weight, for sure. See, it talks to you. It actually responds. 
all, not instantaneously. It's not as good as some of the automatics that are tuned that we like that true, are true. almost indistinguishable from dual clutch transmissions. Yeah, this is a good automatic. But it's good. It's, it's very, a good. very good automatic. It's not as good as you're right. Some of those that almost seem like dual clutches is yeah. not quite that good, but it does. But after the hybrid version, this is a revelation of a transmission. So here's the big question in my mind. $110,000 or so. Probably. What do you buy? Do you buy this? I mean, that's a tough question. <laughs> There's some theater. If you wind the engine up and you really push hard, there I'm is some theater I'm just keeping it here. above six right now because that's where the personality lives. If we're talking that kind of money. Yeah, it's tough. You're buying style here. You are. You're you buying are. a lot of style. and. There is some exclusivity in doing that. And there, there's also going to be the argument, some of you are going to say, well, I'd only buy the Lexus because I know the Lexus will run. <laughs> Lexus is known to be reliable, and I get sure. it. Sure. But a car that is reliable has nothing to do with whether or not it's worth driving. Has nothing Absolutely. to do with it. Absolutely. It Couldn't may agree more. work, that's fine, but that doesn't mean it is worth driving. Yeah. You can have an incredibly reliable car that you just don't even want to be in. So reliability is not the point right. at a $100,000 country crushing car like this. Even though it will be, it'll be great. It, yes, yeah, well, of course it'll be great. But I actually think for a hundred grand in this category, well, you could get a base 911, but I'm not even gonna go that sporty. I'm not even gonna go that Hi, sporty. have you met me? I know, you would get the base 911, but I would say this, I would load out a Jaguar F-Type. That's not a bad choice. I think choice. that would be my play, $100,000. a bad choice. It would be lighter than this, it would rotate better than this. Yeah. And it would have enough of the theater. The styling's not as crazy, but I think the styling there is every bit as good and probably more classic. I'm also including the 8 Series and the SL. I still think I'd go F-Type. Mm, it's not bad. At this level, yeah, I'd be loading out a 911, but... Of course you would. I, Nobody's I, surprised. You know, I do like the fact that this is not necessarily a mainstream thought and you want something that is special and looks special and feels that way. And I agree. The LC500 convertible is very much that. Plus, it comes with what Lexus says is a climate concierge with upper body heating, which I take to mean is the genteel way of saying convertible. <laughs> That's just the new way of saying we're yeah. putting the top down, Yeah. honestly. I think this car is special and unique enough even without oh. being a convertible. I think See? the convertible is a nice ad. Yeah, I think yeah. that pushes it over the edge for me and therefore it is a contender, but at that level, at that price point, there's a lot of choices. It's a tough world at 100 grand for sure. I just, I want some more, uh, just a little bit more raw feel, but that's not what the Lexus customer wants. Not what the Lexus brand is about, even though the LFA was. I'm getting side bug. There's so many bugs out here. I go around a corner, I'm getting side bugs. If, you, if you roll the windows down because of this back windscreen here, it actually doesn't have buffeting except for right here. The <laughs> seat belts <laughs> the flop seat belts. on your shoulders. Well, the rest of it's great, but the seat belts are trying to fly away. We're at some very high speeds. That this it car is usually it is a little bit the about seat the seat belt speeds. flap is not an issue. It is a little it, bit about the speeds. You're right. Now, now you're actually down to freeway speeds, and I'm sure the seat belts would be silent here, <laughs> even though we have the windows up. Just yes. saying. Yeah, you're right. It is a, there is a speed variance there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just a little All right. Bit. So you're gonna feel the throw in the weight through the corners. You're Big gonna time. feel it. Big time. I, I want more. Murder those I want fronts. more precision. But then when you get into it, it does kind of act like a muscle car. It does. It's, that, that's the engine. Yeah. Okay. Convertible for me is where it's at. <laughs> it's the bug smasher. Look at this. It is. This is nasty we, on the we've, side. We've actually, done, we've actually done some art today with Volvo. <sighs> yeah. It's summertime. <laughs>